Welcome to Real Life with Pastor Lynn Shaw of Amazing Grace Fellowship. We hope you are blessed as you receive practical insight into daily living. Join us now as Pastor Lynn brings an exciting word for you that will inspire you to live the abundant life God has for you. Here's Pastor Lynn. Have you ever asked God about things and he was just um, deafeningly silent? Any you ever had that happen to you? You ask God about stuff and there's just overwhelming silence. Does that freak you out a little bit? It can, especially if you're a speaker. So, you know, I, I, I felt very, very strongly that, you know, to speak about what I've spoken about the last four weeks and... You know, I'm usually a couple months ahead in my brain and in my heart. So, you know, three weeks before this ending, it's like, uh, in three weeks, you know, like we're reminding God, right? In three weeks, we're going to be done with this series. Sure be nice to know what we're going to go next. Nothing. <laughs> it's like, okay. I've been at that. I'm 57, so years ago, when I was in my 20s, I might have, I might have started freak out mode. Just a little bit inside. So, two weeks in, it's like, hey, <laughs> I know we've spoken about this every day, and you know, I really don't want to push. But in two weeks, we're going to be done with this one. And man, you gave great direction. Wonderful. You have any ideas? <laughs> Nothing. I'm like, okay, all right. You know, and, and it's actually, as much as it could freak somebody out at this stage of my life, it's kind of exciting because it's like, okay. You know, I could have wax in my ears and maybe I'm not hearing right and, you know, whatever. But all of that being equal, I don't think that's the case. But, you know, I'm human. So... Okay, week and a half. You have anything for me? All right. Okay. Last Sunday, here's my conversation with God in my heart on the way home. It's like, all right, we're we're done with what you ask. And I'll be happy to do what you want to do in the future. But I need to know some things. <laughs> Monday, though. God, God's so sweet and aggravating. <laughs> so Monday morning, you know, my devotional time with God, I'm like, you know, I, I have kind of a... If somebody's looking from the outside, they may not think there's a routine, but there's a definite routine that goes on Monday morning. And, and it's like, okay, Father, you know, I'm not in desperate mode. I mean, I'm, I'm not because God's done this before and it's always ended up, I think, being good. Uh, <laughs> so I said, Father, I just, I just need to know what, what you want us to know. And clear as a bell and just like that. I mean, just as clear as a bell. He said, I want my people to know that they are not alone. So me me being the type A personality that I am, I know that's a surprise to a lot of people that I have a type A personality. It's like, oh, that's so sweet, Lord. Do you want to flesh that skeleton out just a little bit? It's like, it'd be pretty phenomenal if you did, because when you do, it's awesome. And it's like, I just want my people to know they are not alone. So, let's bow our head and close our eyes. I've told you, let's bow our head and close our eyes, and we're done for the day. No. (laughs) So all week, it's like, okay, I got that one. I got it loud, loud, loud and clear. I have to be honest with you. (laughs) There was no filling out the skeleton. So I'm going to fill out a skeleton. Is that okay? 
but even during praise and worship, there's a piece that I, I want you to hear. Um, so if you turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, we're going to look in a couple places. And that message, you know, on, on, on the outset, just those words, I mean, guys, as clear as a bell, God didn't speak to me in an audible voice, but as clear as a bell. Uh, on Monday morning, he said, I just, I want my people to know they are not alone. So that can be sort of a touchy feely statement. It's like, okay, really cool, but you know, we can't see, touch, or taste God, right? And how many of you know sometimes we need, we need something that we can see, taste, or touch? Because we're humans. And have you ever been lonely in the middle of a crowd? Yeah. Today, I guarantee you there's some people in here today, I guarantee you, that on the ticker tape behind your facade, and I'm not saying you're putting on a facade, but we can look at people and go, well, they're doing great. What I began to do on on Monday and every day this week, because it's like, okay, Lord, I'm going to tell them that, but I'm also going to look further and just look at some things. And it says here in Hebrews chapter 13... Verse 1, let brotherly love continue. Don't forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some some have unwittingly entertained angels. Remember the prisoners as if if chained with them. Those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. I mean, if you know already, it's, it's interesting. This portion of scripture also begins to give you just a little bit of insight to not forget people who could be feeling like they're all alone, right? Marriage is honorable. This is kind of an interesting thought in the middle of this. Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled, fornicators, adulterers, God will judge. Let your conduct, let your life, let the way you do life be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. And then he gives a reason. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear what man can do to me. So verse 5, I pulled verse 5 out and I thought, okay, so Lord, you've said this. You, this is what you want me to at least today talk about, that we're not alone. And how that can minister maybe peace to people that maybe your life can be very noisy and in the middle of all of it, you can feel like you're totally alone, that nobody get, gets you, nobody understands where you're at. But on the outside, everything could look okay. So that portion of Scripture where it says, He has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, that's not just a quote from the Old Testament in one verse. That's, that's a summation of what the Old Testament is replete with. Paul's writing this letter to the Hebrew church, The New Testament isn't around. The Gospels haven't been written. The only thing that they have available to them is the Old Testament, right? And 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 specifically, only parts of the Old Testament that they had at any given moment in time where maybe Paul was. So he quotes from the Old Testament, but if you try to look up that scripture, what you're going to find is you're going to find a ton of scriptures. Over and over and over again, God was telling his people, I will never leave you nor forsake you. What I find is interesting that if you, if you, I, I, I can't say that I went to everyone. I went to by far the majority of every scripture that it said that to just look and just try to see what, what God, maybe what are you saying? What's interesting is that in many of the cases where God spoke that, he spoke that to people who had it going on. Life looked good. You'd have never thought, well, that person doesn't feel that way. And I made this statement in the first service that I think is, I've thought about since I've made it in the back of my brain. When God says something, it's because you need it. I mean, if you know, God's not just into saying stuff, to say stuff. When he says something, at least we can say we must need it, Right? So you may be here today and may go, well, I'm, you know, I'm good right now. I'm, I'm good. Okay, cool. Well, tuck it in the back of your brain for the future because there'll be a moment in time that we'll need what God said. Right? 
So I found myself surprised at many of the portions of Scripture where in the Old Testament where Paul was quoting from, or, well, Paul really gave us summation, that I'll never leave you nor forsake you, was in situations where people really looked like things were going well. And I thought, how interesting that God would be so specific to say that when it looked like it was going well. Well, how many of you know we're good at making look, making ourselves look good? Right? And we don't do it in a, we don't do it in an evil way. We don't do it in a way that says, you know what, I'm going to snowball people. We don't do it like that. It's just human nature's need. And the, the amount of times that God spoke, I'll never leave you, tells me something about the human condition. Human beings need other people. Amen. Stay tuned. We will be right back with Pastor Lynn Shaw after these brief messages. Can't make it to service? That's okay. Just head to hgf.org and click on the Watch Live sidebar link during any service and watch us live. Wednesdays at 7 p.m. or Sundays at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m. Great for when you're traveling or for those who are away at school. Church over the internet, what will they think of next? Amen. Human beings are not designed to go through life lonely. We're just not. We're, we're not wired for it. There's, there's nothing about us that's wired for it. And what's interesting is, we'll, we'll just, you know, maybe try to flesh this out just a little bit. I just really want you to know, God really never put tons of meat on this skeleton. So I'm going to say multiple times, you're not alone. And that's really, really important. I I bet this week, just this week alone, I bet I've heard the Lord resonate that in my heart hundreds of times. To where the, the, the academic side of me goes, I get it. I got it the first time you said it, right? But sometimes we need the Holy Spirit to just continually say it again, say it again, and say it again before it begins to, first of all, resonate, mean something, and then make a change and make, make an impact start to happen. So we, if you wouldn't mind, go back to the book of Joshua. I, I first thought of this portion of Scripture. After the Hebrews, I first thought of Joshua. And then during praise and worship, I thought of another guy. I don't know where the address is, but I can tell you the story. So let's go to the book of Joshua, chapter 1. So the first verse says something like this. um, When Moses, the servant of the Lord, died, right? God had a conversation with Joshua. And what happens from verse 2 to verse 9 is a very specific conversation that God had with Joshua. Joshua... If you, if you would, were to study the context, Joshua's not in a place that, you know, horrible things have happened. Joshua's in a pretty good place, actually. The children of Israel are getting ready to cross over into Canaan. Life's good. They've spent their 40 years wandering in the desert, right? And, uh, you know, here they are. They're getting ready to enter in. All the old unbelief and all the old doubt and all the ones that were 40 and over, they're all gone. So there's not that negative influence just, just rampant. They're, they're in a pretty good spot. In fact, they're at a place. They're at a place even physically they can see it. Life looks pretty good. And it says that, you know, so if you could just... Put that, that you got this group of people that have had a pretty strong leader. How many of you know Moses knew how to lead? I mean, one thing that we could say is God used him big time. I don't know about you, but if I were to watch a guy hold a stick over water and watch the water stand at attention while you walk through, I don't know about you, but I'd think, whoo, better listen to this guy. What's interesting about that, it all wasn't peaches and cream for Moses. Moses had his detractors, as every leader has had, can do great things, but there will always be detractors. There will always be somebody that will put chinks in the whatever it may be. And part of it's, you know, Moses was a human as well. So he wasn't perfect, but pretty big leader. So he's gone. 
So can you imagine just the state of this people? As a, as a big people, as a group of people, the children of God, they're in a place that's like, oh man, could they feel like maybe they were all alone, even though there were millions of them? Just like some of you are. Your world's noisy. you got 3,000 Facebook friends. Hundreds of people are following you on Twitter. Right? You maybe have a position at your job that's influential or whatever it may be. But yet, on the inside, you could feel like, I'm totally alone. Right? It's a tough place to be. It's not a fun place to be. So God wants us to know. I'm going to say it again. I just want you to know, God says, you're not alone. So Joshua, verse 2, let's pick up here. God talking to Joshua. So now this isn't a statement that's to the whole of children of Israel. It certainly has application to all of every, all of Israel. It has application to us. But this is a conversation that God's having with Joshua. Can you imagine Joshua's state of mind right now? He's been Moses' assistant. He's stood side by side and watched Moses do these phenomenal miracles. He watched this whole thing. He watched it all. He, he, he's For years, he's, he's stood alongside an incredible leader. You know, he was not as old as Moses, obviously, but man, this guy that he served, you know, stood toe-to-toe, face-to-face, nose-to-nose with Pharaoh and ended up living. Pretty incredible. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan. You know what? There's a Jordan that many of you are facing right now in your life. And just on the other side of that Jordan is the purpose of God for you. The start of an adventure for you. You're right in the same spot. Arise, go over this Jordan, you and all of this people. What I love about that is God's directive to Joseph, or sorry, to Joshua wasn't just for himself, it included a group of people. How many of you know we can never, we were never designed to be loners. We were never designed to do anything ever in our lives without other people. You and all this people to the land which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. What's interesting there, something I just noted this week, I've read this a hundred times. Almost every other portion of scripture that says that when God talks about that land, he says to the land I gave you. Here he says to the land I'm giving you. How many of you know that there's things, I, I used an example but I gave it away. Let me have that box, Daniel. Here's a gift that I'm giving you. Do you want to take it? We'll take it. Could there be some adversity in taking it? Dad's always stronger. But anyhow. Are you with me? First of all, it's not hers until she takes it. God's giving us stuff. Giving us stuff. Not just having given. Are you with me? He's giving us stuff that requires us to take. And until she takes it, what I'm giving her is not hers. And then it's like, okay, I'm giving you this gift that's behind my back. You want it? Get it. I'll get it. <laughs> See? She's like most of us. Does nothing. No, I'm kidding. What I'm trying to say is, is what they were about to go into... I think so so there is a so there's a a comfort that I think the Lord wants us to hear is that we're not alone but I also think not on the flip side because it's not an either or but with that I think he also wants to encourage us to say what's before you I'm giving you but there's some things that we need to do in order to realize all that he has for us. Would that be safe to say, right? Okay, so. Every place that the sole of your feet will tread upon, now he says, listen, 
I've given you. But listen to that. Here's what's cool about that. In other words, if he weren't put to put his foot there, it would not become his. Okay? That's a cool deal. I could, I could spend a couple weeks on that. From the wilderness of this Lebanon as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. In other words, here's what I hear God saying to Joshua. He says, listen, if you can see it, if you can dream it, as far as your eyes can see, the possibilities are limitless. Every place that you put your foot, and notice, Joshua was, was going to have to put his foot somewhere. God wasn't going to move his feet. If you'll put your foot there, I've given it to you. I just want you to know why. Because he's with us. Amen. So, um, verse 5. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Well, that sounds like a lie. Seriously, read out the rest of Joshua's life and see if anybody stood against him. All the time. But at the end of the day, guess what? He stood. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what comes against you. Will there be things that come against you? Yeah. God just wanted to tell Joshua from the very beginning. You know what? Listen, I just want you to know, I've got your back, dude. I'm with you. I'm there. And I just want you to know that it's all going to be good. You just, you, you need to place your feet in some places, right? As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Isn't it interesting that with the rest of the scripture that we read, it's going to shock you how many times God told Joshua, I'm with you. I'm not going to leave you. What, what is amazing to me is this, is that it obvious, because I really full firmly believe when God's, God doesn't say anything just to say something. He says it for a purpose. And one of the things that it reveals in me is that Joshua... This guy that we end up, you know, just just revering. This guy that we all want to be like. There was something in him that needed to know. That needed to know again and again and again. Hey, I'm with you. I'm with you. So I want to encourage you. If you're in that spot right now, man, you just want to know God knows your address. Have you ever felt like sometimes God doesn't even know where you live? You know what I mean? I I know that rationally, and when we're talking to people, oh yes, God is so good, da-da-da, but on the inside, there's a part of us sometimes that goes, but dude, it would sure be nice to know. Are you with me? Here's a guy that we revere, Joshua. Obviously, there was something in him that he needed to know, that he knew, that he knew, that he was not alone in this. Wow. Wow. So when the enemy sits on your shoulder and says, you know, if you were to just bucket up a little bit, buttercup, you wouldn't have to be so weak. I just want you to know, you're not alone. Be strong and of good courage. Do you know the only way you can be strong and of good courage? Okay, now we could get into the theology behind that. We could talk about faith and what faith looks like. We could talk about a ton of different things. But you know one of the greatest things that you can be strong and have good courage is knowing that somebody's bigger with you. I had a big brother, and uh, he was four years older than me. And there was a kid in fifth grade. His name was Donnie Hunter. He was a genetic outcross. <laughs> in fifth grade, Donnie Hunter was six foot tall, weighed 165 pounds, and had a beard. Serious. We're like, where in the world did you come from, dude? And he was the classic bully. The classic bully. And I was not one to be bullied. I know my type A personality is a total surprise. But I have to tell you, when Donnie Hunter eyeballed me, the pucker factor just went through the roof. It's like, holy smokes. I was a little kid. I never hit five foot until I was a freshman in high school. So I was in the elementary kids, all the boys this week. I was there. 
There was one other kid, Roger Hartley. Roger. We were little. I wasn't going to take guff off of anybody, and everybody knew I wasn't one to take guff. But when Donner Hun- Donnie Hunter eyeballed me, I'm like, Ooh, this is going to hurt. <laughs> but you know what? So I told my brother about this. I told my brother that I just needed to... This guy just kind of scared me a little bit because he was a classic bully. He was a kid that Mindy will just walk up to a kid and just hit him and just slap him or hit him in the face and just take whatever he wanted. And it's like, that ain't going to happen to me, but I know what's going to hurt. You know, It's like, I'm not an idiot. He's an ogre. I'm At that time, I was probably four foot, I don't know, four foot three. He was six foot tall in fifth grade. I'm not joking. It's not an exaggeration. And had a beard. <laughs> kidding it's like dude he shaved we so my brother just told me he said you don't worry about him at all never forget it he said you don't worry about him at all so my brother was four years older he was a freshman in high school he was this donnie hunter was bigger than my brother and he said you don't worry at all i go what are you gonna do he goes i'm gonna be in the bushes <laughs> and you know what all of a sudden, you know, it's like a chihuahua against a St. Bernard. Well, it's like, dude, I'll chew your throat out before you know what hit you. <laughs> so sure enough, there was an area outside of school that Donnie Hunter would usually do his deal with kids. And sure enough, he eyeballed me. And I looked around and I saw my brother. And Donnie Hunter came up to me and he wanted to do his deal and I lit into him so hard. And my brother just stepped out and just stood there. And guess what? Donnie Hunter became my best friend. (laughs) Why? Yeah, I could say I stood up to him. But you know the biggest reason? Because he knew I had a big brother. (laughs) And the two shawls together could overcome. So here's Joshua. Can you imagine the pressure on Joshua? Can you imagine the pressure of like, how do I play second fiddle to Moses? I don't know that I could have stood down Pharaoh. He did. Wow, I'm taking that sword or that shepherd's deal and holding it over water. Holy smoke. So here, God's already told him a couple times at least, I'm with you. Be strong and of good courage. It's easy to do this when you know that you know that you know you're not alone. Thank you for watching Real Life this week. Tune in next week for another exciting message on Real Life. Or come see Pastor Lynn Shaw in person here at Amazing Grace Fellowship at 1061 Eastland Drive North. Sundays at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We'd love to see you there.